So friends, welcome back to our channel, Learn with Gigs. Today I have invited Manik Ghosh for the live Power BI mock interview. So let's begin with the interview round. And before that, please do like this video. It really motivates me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to it. And you can also follow me on Instagram, Learn with Gigs. And friends, if you want to learn data analyst demanding skills, which includes Excel, SQL, Power BI, Python, Tableau, as well as introduction to Microsoft Fabric, then I would recommend you to go for Code Basics Data Analyst Bootcamp 4.0, and you can become an AI-enabled data analyst. The bootcamp price is very affordable, as it costs to piece 10,800, and at the same time, the quality of the course is very good that I can assure you of. This is how your learning journey will look like. So first you will start with Excel, then Power BI, afterwards SQL and along with that you will be learning Python, Tableau as well as Microsoft Fabric which is very demanding in the market. And parallelly you will be talked about the importance of online credibility on LinkedIn as a fresher. Along with that they will help you in resume preparation. Then they will assist you in job application strategies and also they will provide an interview preparation guide. At the end they will also provide two virtual internships which you can include on your resume too. So after four plus months of consistent hard work you will be job ready in the market. I will provide the link of this bootcamp in the description box of this video please do check it out hi manik uh, can you please introduce yourself first thank you sir uh, for providing me this opportunity i am minor coach and i am from Dibrugar, Assam. i have completed my graduation in computer science and engineering um, and in the meantime i have found my interest and passion in data analytics and for which i have decided to upskill myself uh, through a bootcamp where i have worked on projects in excel power bi SQL uh, to uh, in various do domains such as uh, consumer goods, FMCG, automotive to perform uh, data analytics, uh, data uh, visualization, uh, data modeling, data transformation, and to present the ins insights to uh, stakeholders. Okay, so what kind of data sources you have used uh, to create your Power BI reports? Uh, okay, till now, I have used uh, sources like Excel files, CSV files, and SQL. SQL, uh, which database? Uh, for MySQL. Okay, so have you created any reports where you have used combination of Excel and a database, which is MySQL? Uh, yes, uh, in one of my projects, which is Business Insights 360, I have uh, created, uh, means I have loaded the data from uh, text, uh, CSE files, Excel and SQL. So did you face any challenge when we have data from multiple sources in Power BI? Uh, one of the challenges is like uh, in Excel, uh, we have, uh, a certain limitation that there can be uh, data rows uh, for 1 million only but in that data set we have rows more than 1 million uh, so that was one of the challenge and uh, another challenge is like if we uh, extract the data from multiple sources then there can be a duplication of data and also the data types can be of uh, different formats uh, like in uh, csv we can have a different format and from sql we can have a different format okay so you talked about uh, inconsistency of data. So for example, when you pulled the table in Power Query, so you found that there are a few columns which has data type as text, okay. And they have a lot of null values, okay. So in that case, how will you proceed with this kind of situation? It's a text data type column. Okay, uh, first of all, if we have uh, lots of null, we can check uh, the amount uh, quantity. Like if the amount is less than 5%, five, 5%, and we can uh, convey the this one with the stakeholders if it is not necessary we can remove those null values using uh, remove uh, blank rows and if there uh, uh, if there is no option like removing is not an option then we can replace them with the uh, default values such as mean uh, median values so that was my question if it is a text data type column if what will you do if it is text, uh, then we can replace it with the mode values mode okay Okay, you know about merge functionality in Power Query, right? Yes. Sir. What does left anti merge results? Left anti merge will uh, return the rows which are only present on the left hand column but are not present on the right column, uh, right hand side table. Can you merge two tables on the basis of three common columns? That means you have three of the columns which are matching in both the tables. Uh, so, uh, if we have uh, three common columns uh, between the two tables, then we can merge them uh, based on one common column uh, any one of them which is the most logical one we can uh, connect them and if it is required that we have uh, the we need to connect both based on all the three columns then also we can do it okay manak uh, can you tell me which dax function is uh, useful to make an inactive relationship to an active relationship uh, to make an 
inactive relationship to an active relationship we can use uh, use relationship uh, dex function and do you know about uh, junk dimensions in data modeling junk dimensions uh, no i haven't heard about okay man like, uh, what kind of data models you have built till now data models uh, i have used uh, star schema uh, and a uh, snowflake schema in the bi360 project i have used this snowflake schema. what is the disadvantage of having a star schema one of the disadvantage of having a star schema will be a, like if we have a very large data set where uh, the dimension tables are uh, uh, large in number then we can have a, a disadvantage like uh, there can be a redundancy of data so that's a one disadvantage have you faced man a circular dependency issue in creating data models uh, so as of now i have I haven't faced how can you differentiate a table like how will you determine okay this particular table is a dim table and this particular table is a fact table yes, in fact tables we will have uh, um, measurable quantities which are uh, qualitative data whereas in dimension tables we will have a uh, categorical data which actually provides a context to the fact table also uh, in fact tables we will have uh, foreign keys which are being uh, referencing to the dimension tables and in dimension tables, we'll have a primary key that is being referenced to the uh, fact table. So in a dimension table, we can't have a quantitative data. That's what you're saying. We can have a quantitative data. Like for example, in fact tables, we, if we have a sales data and we have a sales amount and sales uh, quantity, and in dimension tables, we can also have a, a, another quantitative data, but it will also have a different uh, descriptive values such as uh, product id of uh, customer id customer name such such kind of thing but in fact tables we'll have the quantitative data primary do you know about row function in dax row function no sir okay so when uh, if there is a requirement and you need to create a card visual and and in that card is visual you need to generate uh, a value which is basically uh, the average daily sales that is happening excluding the weekends how will you write the DAX code for it? So, so I had uh, placed the DAX function in my chat box and it uh, shows here the calculate of average of sales amount where, uh, where we are using the weekday function and from sales amount uh, table where the uh, input is true, which basically means that the week is starting from Monday and it goes up to 5. Uh, where five will be like uh, Friday, and it will uh, capture the sales amount for only the weekdays, uh, and it will exclude the weekends. And then okay. we can uh, use this value in the card card visuals. So, do you know about uh, iterator functions like sumx, uh, concatenate x? What does they do? Uh, iterator functions uh, basically they calculate uh, the evaluates the expression row by row as compared to the uh, uh, other functions such as sum or average where they calculate uh, basically uh, for, or for the column and one advantage of iterative function about this uh, sum average functions would be like uh, uh, they can uh, evaluate based on more than one columns in which case uh, calculate table function can be useful calculate table functions uh, could be useful like we have to return a, a table a table uh, based on a certain filter context how calculate table is different from summarize dax function uh, summarize dax function it will uh, uh, give the uh, simple uh, summarization like without using the uh, calculate function whereas in calculate it is internally calculating uh, the uh, evaluation at or aggregations uh, do you know about direct query connectivity so, uh, direct query basically they load uh, in direct query the data is not loaded into power bi directly Whereas the queries are actually performed at the source level. Uh, have you worked with the direct query report? Uh, I haven't uh, actually worked with direct query. I have used uh, till now only import mode. Okay. So suppose, for example, you have been given a situation where a direct query report is there, and there is a requirement where you need to calculate year to date sales of a company in a direct query report. How will you do that? Yes, I have this is the DAX formula in the chat box. Okay, can you explain this? Uh, here is the calculate uh, sum of sales amount. It uh, calculates, it takes the sales amount uh, and sales date uh, 
will take the max maximum sales date amount and then it will uh, calculate the uh, total sales amount and return this value okay how slicers are different from page level filters slices uh, different from page level filters in page level filters uh, the filters are uh, coming from the uh, filter pane and the filters which are applied in page level filters will be apply applicable to all the visuals in the that particular page whereas uh, slicers are uh, uh, based on the user selections and it are interactive it provides an interactive element uh, to the end users okay uh, what are field parameters field parameters um, so actually I have not worked with parameters. Okay, fine. So suppose you have created a report. Okay, and that is a one page report and you have multiple visuals on that page. You found that when you were using slicer, one of the visuals was not filtering out. Other visuals are filtering out based on that slicer value, but one of the visual is not filtering. How will you handle this situation? Uh, so if uh, there is a one particular visual uh, which is uh, not uh, interacting based on a slicer selection we can go we can select that visuals and then go to the format tab and see if the edit interaction uh, option is uh, enabled or not and uh, and if required you can uh, use the turn on the edit interaction option to check the if the visual is uh, interactive with that particular slicer selection okay so can you tell me any use case of a bookmark uh, bookmarks are basically they uh, capture a state of the uh, page uh, page report and these are uh, this can be used to add the interactive element where the users can toggle between different views within a page uh, which uh, enables uh, uh, saving of space and bookmarks can also be uh, used uh, along with the edit interaction features as well uh, to uh, restrict the uh, to basically restrict the filtering of the uh, different visuals okay can you tell me uh, the latest Power BI update which you like the most? Uh, the one of the latest features uh, which I like is the uh, new view which we have in Power BI, which is the DAX view, uh, where we can uh, see the different measures and uh, calculated columns. And it is a interesting feature which uh, I, I'll be checking out, and I'm also checking it out the features to check various DAX measures. Uh, use at the calculated columns as well have you utilized performance analyzer in power bi desktop yes uh, i have used a performance analyzer uh, like you can uh, go to the view tab and then you can select the performance analyzer and then you can click on the refresh to view the uh, visuals uh, visuals that are there in the report and check which visuals or dax is taking a larger amount of uh, time to load if uh, a visuals if there are a large number of visuals which are taking large amount of load we can restrict the uh, number of visuals in that particular page and if there is a dax uh, which is taking a certain amount of space then we can uh, optimize it or we can use or we can receive the use of calculated columns and replace it with measures and this will also enable uh, the optimization of the uh, report which will uh, further enhance the performance Okay, so in which particular case premium license in Power BI service is useful? Like a premium license would be useful if there are large numbers of uh, users in an organization. In that particular case, the Power BI premium uh, license is the most useful one. So have you worked with role level security in Power BI? Uh, so I'm, uh, I have not implemented role level security as of yet, but I am aware of the theoretical concept behind it. Low level security basically restricts the amount of data for a particular users or a particular uh, person from a particular department. For example, like if you have sales person, uh, who, like they should be only giving data regarding the sales. And uh, in that cases, we can implement the row level security. Uh, it can be implemented uh, in Power BI desktop. How will you test whatever role you have created in Power BI desktop? How will you test that in Power BI desktop itself? That okay, my, my roles are properly working. Do you know about it? Uh, no, sir. Do you know the use case of a data flow? Use case of a data flow? Uh, no. Okay. What is the necessary condition to set up a scheduled refresh for a Power BI report? Uh, primary uh, necessary condition that we require to enable a schedule refresh would be like we uh, need to set up a gateway 
Okay. Okay, Manak, uh, can you tell me the last challenging situation that you faced and that you overcome yourself? So w- one of the challenges which I faced was uh, when I have a large amount of data. Uh, so uh, when having a large amount of data is in itself a challenge. Uh, it becomes overwhelming at times. So to manage the large number of rows, uh, what I have uh, decided is that we can filter out uh, or filter out the unnecessary rows which are not uh, required for analysis purpose. For example, if we have a sales data uh, for last five years, but we only required uh, the for analysis purpose, we only required the data for last three months. Then we can uh, easily filter out the sales uh, from the previous more, more than uh, three months data. Okay, Manak, uh, I'm done from my side. Thank you so much for attending this mock interview. And guys, uh, let me know in the comment box how well he performed in the interview. And if you have any better answers for the questions he answered. Thank you, Manak.